So today we celebrate communion. And communion is all about remembering. Remembering who we were, remembering who we are, remembering where we're going, remembering whose we are. I got out an old Pilgrim picture directory this week. This one was put together in 2011. Then there's this one from 2004. <laughs> and you know what? Some of the people pictured in here aren't here anymore. Some have died. Some have moved away. Some have left. But we are still gathering together for communion. You know, some of these pictures look um, really old. Some people here have grown up. Those who were really young now seem huge as they've gotten older. And some of you more mature people, well, um, you look a bit smaller now because you know we shrink as we get older. <laughs> and some people aren't in here at all because they weren't here yet when we put this together but they're here with us now. And we gather together for communion. When we come together, we remember the communion story of Jesus gathering with his disciples in an upper room, and he breaks bread with them and drinks wine. And that's what they ate all the time, bread and wine, just like we have pizza and coffee. But Jesus stopped them that last night and said, wait, wait a minute, this is special. And he lifted up the bread and the cup and he told his disciples, when you do this together, remember me. Remember our good times and our hard times and what we're trying to do together. Remember what we were. Remember what we are. Remember where we're going. And so during communion we think about that that Jesus died the next day and was resurrected. And sometimes during communion, we think about that too, of those we know who have died and been resurrected. This week especially, we think of Marjorie German. We think about the people we miss. And Jesus knew when he celebrated his, that last supper with his friends that he was going to miss them a lot. And you know, it's the same, but we still come to this table every month over and over again, remembering who we were, who we are, where we're going, and whose we are. Come together as Christians trying to remember Jesus' message and going out, giving light and hope and strength for the journey. You know, the early church remembered that Jesus said to love one another and take care of one another. So they actually started having dinners together, and they brought what they had. And if someone didn't have enough, they shared. They listened to Isaiah's words that say, Hey there, all you are thirsty. Come to the water. Are you penniless? Come anywhere. Buy and eat wine and milk. No money needed. It's free. We do that here. We share in a lot of ways, and communion reminds us that we're all in this together, and we take care of one another. But you know what? I don't think communion's limited to that table right there. It also happens in coffee hour and at funeral service receptions, too. We remember who we were, who we are, where we're going, and whose we are. Now today is a special time of communion. It's Worldwide Communion Sunday. And all around the world, people are doing the same thing that we're doing, celebrating communion. And it started way before 10.30 this morning. Think about what you had for dinner last night. My son had a friend over, so we had chicken nuggets. So while I was munching my chicken nuggets, last night, Saturday night, it was already Sunday morning in New Zealand. And New Zealand Christians were gathered together to share the bread and the cup celebrating communion and thanking God for springtime, because indeed it is spring there. And in the middle of the night, last night, three o'clock in the morning, who was awake? 
not me. But it was mid-morning in Baghdad, Iraq, and Chaldean Christians live there. They're Christians who are descended from the very first followers of Christ and have lived in Iraq generation after generation through wartime, through peacetime. They speak Aramaic, the same language that Jesus spoke. And as we lay sleeping, they were remembering Christ and sharing the bread and the cup together. And just before the sun rose here in Massachusetts, around six o'clock this morning, the churches in Dakar, Senegal, were celebrating communion. You know, Dakar is where many years ago, slaves were put on ships and sent to America. As folks in Senegal remember Jesus in communion, they also remember the difficult history and their connections to African-Americans in this country. At nine this morning, as we were stirring, Christians gathered in Buenos Aires, Argentina. They passed the peace, La Paz, and shared communion together, and are probably finishing their services right about now. And in a little while, we will be done and go out into the world and the rest of our day. And later, around two, the Inuit, who used to be called Eskimos, will gather for their service, and it will be cold there snowy, and they will come inside and worship with others, and they'll warm each other up, body and spirit. Right now it's early morning in Hawaii, and later this afternoon and into the evening, Hawaiian Christians will wake up like we did and gather at churches at the beach or up on green hillsides, and many still sing in Hawaiian and pray to Jesus, Yesu, as they remember and take communion together. They thank God for aloha the spirit that unites them. So all over, we come together, same table, same bread, same cup. Remember God's words to Isaiah, listen I'm to my life-giving words, I'm making a covenant with you, the same as the one with David, a solid, enduring love. And in many languages and traditions, they remember that promise. And through it all, we're united together. There are not many days in the year when you know that you and Hawaiians and Inuit and Iraqis and Africans and Europeans are all doing the same thing on the same day. It unites us to the person sitting next to you and a person so far away. Nations who have never heard of you will become running to you as we all gather around the table. So communion brings us together, it gives us hope, and finally we're given a calling, a job, a task at the table. Eating the bread, taking the cup is strength for the journey. It's not just a snack, but it's courage in the face of resistance and oppression. It is peace in the midst of anguish and conflict. It is comfort in desolation. It is hope in the darkness. For God says, I don't think the way you think. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts, and my ways different than your ways. But just as rain and snow come down from the skies, and don't go back up until they've watered the earth, so, too, my words come down and make things grow and blossom and change. They do not come back empty-handed. So you will go out in joy. You'll be led into a whole and complete life. The mountains and hills will lead the parade bursting with song, and the trees in the forest shall clap their hands. That's an amazing image. And one that will come into being through the work of your hands and my hands and our hands, and the world's hands working as Jesus working in the world. I tell you, that's some mighty powerful bread and grape juice. So thanks be to God for this day, for this meal, for the life of Jesus, for the community of churches, for our connections to the global church, for the work that we do remembering who we are, how we're called, whose we are. Thanks be to God. Amen.